Okay, so I've recently been sent this prototype tablet and it is very cool. And it could be the Linux tablet you've been waiting for. It comes with a kickstand, so you can flip it like that. Uh, it also comes with a trackpad and keyboard, which is magnetic, uh, and you can have it like this flat, or you can flip it up if you want it to be slightly raised. Another nice feature is it comes with a stylus, uh, and it's a pretty decent quality stylus as well, very responsive, very bright display. Again, this is a prototype, been sent to me by Fido S, uh, who make this Chromium-based operating system, Fido S, which is excellent. So it does have dual monitor support. I've plugged in my HDMI to USB-C adapter that I use normally with phones, and you can see that it's working, and it's working as a secondary display. So if I was to start up something on here, say for instance files and maybe ADA64, you can see they come up on this display, but we still have this on the other display. So let's have a look at the Indiegogo, which has got a bit of information on it. So let's maximize this. Uh, so from the Indiegogo, FIDTAB Duo, open source and hackable Linux tablet powered by Fido S. And it's the hackable bit that's the cool bit about it. So unlike a lot of other tablets, you will be able to install other operating systems on this. So it's gonna be, hopefully in the future, very, very flexible. As I say, this is a prototype. Uh, in fact, they've got pictures of this prototype on the website. Uh, mine is the 64 gig, but the end model is gonna be 128 gig. Um, but the really great thing about this is the CPU. Now this is using the Rockchip RK3588S, which is a really powerful processor, which has been in some single board computers. I've played around with it and it does run really, really nicely. Uh, it's very low power as well, so the battery life on this is excellent. You can see there's all these early bird offers on here and there's various different benchmarks and things on the processor. You can see some close-ups of the tablet, so the USB-C socket, 3.5mm uh, headphone jack. We have this little slot on the side, which if I pop in a SIM ejector, appears to be for micro SD and uh, a nano SIM as well. So that's pretty cool. So I've been sent the gray one, but the red one looks pretty cool as well. And uh, you can see the stylus matches and everything. 755 grams without the folio keyboard. It is definitely heavier than my 11 inch iPad, although this is a 12 and a half inch device uh, and 1325 with the keyboard. Now the one I've been sent isn't 2560 by 1600. Mine's um, a lower resolution than that, but I'm not sure because when I played a Linux game, it did detect that resolution, but Fido S seems to show it at a lower resolution. But again, this is a prototype. This isn't the final one. So I've already mentioned the storage and the RAM. It's got a fingerprint sensor on the power button. I'll test the stylus in a minute. And Fido S, which is based on Chromium, uh, has support for Linux and also Android apps. So a really nice combination. It's a very rounded operating system with all that support. Yeah, the red does look very cool. Something different. Oh, you can take the back off. I didn't know if you could take the back off because it, it's, uh, well, maybe it's very, very strong magnets. I'll have a look at that later. So under the frequently asked questions, what is open source hardware? It does say you will also have the option to boot other operating systems if you wish. But there's loads of uh, questions and answers and discussion in there if you want to have a look at that. So let's have a look at ADA64 and uh, show what specs we're working with. So it does say platform RK3399. I don't think it is. I think that's wrong because uh, it does seem pretty fast. Although I've not had a 3399 before, I've only tried the 3588 from Rockchip. So we've got eight gig of RAM, 64 gig of storage on this prototype. And if we go to the CPU here, it is eight core, and the A76A55 matches up with the 3588S, so I have got the right processor. And the display does detect as 2560 by 1600, so it must be just Fido S that detects it at a lower resolution. And we've got our thermals here. Is that going to show? Yeah, so 39 degrees. I haven't heard any fans yet. I'm not sure if there is any fans. Um, but uh, when I try a bit of emulation in a minute, maybe we'll get some fans if there are some. Let's launch a few things to show how it runs. So if I launch the Play Store, the Chrome browser, the Files app, uh, then Ada64, which is an Android app. Uh, then if I go back down here and open LibreOffice Impress, which is a Linux app. Uh, and then I go back and maybe open another 
uh, Android app, which uh, I installed this sketchbook, which is for the touchscreen and for drawing on. So if I now, on my keyboard, press this key, it will show me all the open apps. So if I just raise this up and tap it, you can see I can go between all the open apps. And it's quite cool how it can have an Android app, a Chrome app, another Chrome app, another Android app, and a Linux app, all at the same time running, and just seems like one operating system. Very, very clever. So let's try this sketchbook, and we'll show you a bit of the gaming. So if I click on this, and then drag it down to the touch screen, because obviously it's not going to work up there. Probably worth starting again, but if I tap on this, and let's go for a bit of bright yellow, and I can start shading over there, and then maybe a thinner one in a blue, it is pretty responsive. It's not as quick as my iPad. So if I, I don't know how to clear this off. I really don't know how to clear this off. Have I got an eraser? That looks like an eraser. Oh, there you go, look. So I can rub this off and uh, just enough so I can I can write something on here. But it is, it's pretty responsive and it, it is nice to use, but it's not as fast as, well, my iPad Pro is 120 hertz. Uh, so I guess that's why it's so fast. Which one's going to be the best one to show this on? So if we go for this technical pen and we'll pick black as a color and just let it flow, you can see that it it's not as fast as I'm doing it, but it's pretty good. And for things like drawing, I mean, I guess it depends how you draw uh, and shading things in and things like that, it's it's pretty decent. But also you have... This little stylus option down the bottom here, if I tap on that, uh, it's got a screen capture option, so I can drag what part of the screen I want to capture, and then I can move it around to make sure that it's capturing the right bit. Uh, or, I can cancel that out, I can tap on this again. I can do laser pointer, which is basically highlighting a particular point. I guess that means more if you're doing it on a dual display. So if you're, if you're showing it on a projector or something like that, you can say you can be talking about a certain part, you need to press this or whatever. Um, so all of that's pretty cool. Uh, and then we have the other option, which is magnifying glass, which you can just hold over any point and it will show you close up what it sees. So let's try a bit of emulation with Dolphin, which is Wii and GameCube emulation. I've got my Android controller because my Xbox 360 and Xbox One controllers didn't seem to uh, pair up with the Bluetooth properly, but this is paired and is working absolutely fine. So let's have a look at that. Let's launch uh, Simpsons Hit and Run. So it does run a little bit slow on Simpsons Hit and Run, which is a bit of a shame, um, but there's a couple of reasons for that. The resolution seems to be running very high on the operating system and I can't lower it, which would definitely help it. Uh, but also we've got no Vulkan support with Android in Chrome OS. You can see it slows down quite dramatically every now and then. Let's try PS2 and see how that runs. The processor is definitely up to it. The processor can definitely run Dolphin at a really fast speed. This is Ether SX2, the PlayStation 2 emulator. Yeah, that seems to be running all right. Um, but I can't go any higher on the resolution and normally on this CPU uh, you can go two times native resolution and I am getting a bit of slowdown at one times. Again, this is really to do with Vulkan. This is the Android version of GTA San Andreas and it works absolutely fine, lovely and smooth, looks great as well. No worries with that. Unfortunately I've had to turn off the audio just because of copyright strikes. But uh, it worked fine with the audio as well. Yeah, brilliant. And here's the Android version of Call of Duty and it uh, seems to be working absolutely fine. And all the movement is really nice, really smooth. Yeah, no worries at all. Was there people over there? Oh. <laughs> oh dear. I am terrible at this. You can see it, it is really smooth, really nice to play, really responsive. This is the multiplayer game. So I've really enjoyed trying out this prototype. It is, uh, it's a really nice device. It's really, really well made. There's a lot of things to like about it. Uh, I haven't showed how bright the display is. The display is incredibly bright. I've had it nowhere near that level and uh, well, it, goes, it goes brighter than you need. I mean, it's not a sunny day, so I can't really try it out in sunlight, but I think actually it would fare pretty well. 
So uh, if I close this up, you can see what it's like for carrying around. It's got this really nice sort of gray fabric on it. And uh, it does have quite a premium feel to it. I like the kickstand. I'd kind of like the kickstand. I keep doing the wrong end. I'd kind of like the kickstand for my iPad uh, because it's a really nice addition to just be able to prop it up like that, then flip down the keyboard. It's quite clever as well, the way that the keyboard can be raised or flat. And the reason I say that is because a lot of Android apps uh, and also some things in Chrome require to swipe from below the frame. When it's in this mode, you can't do that. So you get this option to be able to do that. Not that you'd need to do it much when you've got mouse and keyboard out at the same time. But the pen works really well. Uh, if I want to take everything apart, it's all magnetic. So this comes off and this part, as long as you pull it at the right angle, comes off really, really easily. Great strong magnets on it as well though. We've got power button on the top here. We've got volume control on a rocker switch. Looks like stereo speakers on either side. If we pop it this way around, so just a plain back of it. This is the magnetics to uh, power the keyboard and also connect it as well. Just thought I'd do a test showing my 11 inch iPad Pro next to this FIDE tab. I've put both up to maximum brightness. Let's try and play them at the same time. So the iPad's muted at the moment because it was in pause mode. But you can see it is still very, very bright. Now I really rate this iPad. Uh, I think the iPad has still got slightly better contrast, but they're really not worlds apart as displays and I wouldn't have expected this, especially when, uh, you know, for the cost of buying a similar keyboard and pen for the iPad would pretty much pay for this whole bundle. Uh, it's about 350 for a trackpad keyboard for an iPad. Now I do love my iPad, so I'm not putting my iPad down. But another thing in favor of the FIDE tab is the fact that it has a full desktop browser. And I really like to have a full desktop browser. Uh, there are some things I can't do in YouTube Studio on my iPad that I can do in the FIDE tab. And I usually have to go for my MacBook or something like that to be able to have a full web browser. So having a tablet with a full web browser and Linux and access to Android apps is very impressive. I love it. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.